Aaron Outdoors is brought to you by Franklin Chevrolet Buick GMC, DonFranklinAuto.com, your dealer for life. Lake Cumberland Properties, over 25 years of experience sharing the beauty of Lake Cumberland. Day and Day Feed, more than just a feed store. Lake Country Outdoors, everything for the serious sportsman. McKinney and Blair Insurance, shop and save at the insurance store. Check with us, you'll be glad you did. Rex's Cycle Shop, located at 1349 Campbellsville Road in Columbia. Jones Exteriors, roofing, siding, windows, seamless gutters, quality pole barns, decks, and more. WK Deer Products, makers of Sweet Rack 18. Big Game Tree Stands, Icon Trail Cameras, Execute Scent Control. And by Muddy Outdoors, serious gear for serious hunters. Hello everyone and welcome once again to Aaron Outdoors. Today's episode is a very special one. It's a trapping episode, one we've been working on for quite some time and we know you guys will enjoy all the action that's ahead to come. But what we'll show you first is some harvest photos from viewers who have submitted deer pictures to us here at Aaron Outdoors this fall. Uh, we partnered with the Times Journal here locally. The pictures appeared in the newspaper and now we'll show them to you here now, our bragging wall. Thanks to all those who sent in their harvest photos. We really appreciate it. And a big congratulations to those who harvested their first buck this year. Well, now it's time to transition into the trapping part of the show. We've had several requests for a how-to guide for trapping predators, so we've teamed up with local experts Zach Wilson and Jed Lawless to show us how it's done. Getting ready to get some traps ready to go out and set in the field. And uh, Zach, what's the first step that you do when you prepare your trap? Say you went to the store and you've got some new sets you want to get ready to put out. What would be the first thing that you would uh, do? Before we get started trapping every time, we always boil our traps. You can use any propane tank, any propane cooker. We just got an old kettle. We fill it up with water. We've got logwood trap die. We put two to three bags in each in there and when we get started we just we've got our traps on a on a wire. We've got four we've got five traps on this wire here. We'll just drop those down in the boiling water. We'll let those 
we'll let those boil for about six to eight minutes, and then once they're once they boil in that water, we'll take them out. That that takes all of our scent off of them. They'll never be touched again from this point on with bare hands. We'll always have rubber gloves on. We'll take them out. We always just hang them up. And then from then on, of course, they're, they'll dry. And then when we get ready to go set them, we'll put them in our baskets and then we'll head out. I know that's one of the main things, especially with some of the animals you're wanting to, you're targeting, is uh, the coyote. And the coyote sense of smell is super sharp. And uh, anytime he detects a human scent, he's wary. So that, that's a real key, and we touch on it, I think, different times through the program. But that's a real important factor, I think, in, in preparing to get ready uh, to set these traps out. Yes, I mean, everything we have is bold. We've got the traps, we've got the stakes, which these are just rebar 3 8 stakes. Well, we've got a, a nut welded on the end. They're probably 18 to 20 inches long. We'll bowl all these. We'll bowl the traps. We've got the shovels and hammers and stuff that we'll use to set to make the sets with. All that stuff's bowled. And then, like I said, it's never touched again with bare hands. It always have rubber gloves on. And, of course, we always wear rubber boots also. First of all, of course, setting traps, you're going to need traps. This right here, the size that we normally use is one and three quarters, one and three quarters twos. They're all good for coyotes. We've got smaller ones for raccoons, possums, and we've even got bigger ones than these if you want to get in like bobcats. Some people like the bigger stuff. They're a little bit stronger, but uh, we got the traps. For our setting traps, we always use the, the double stake swivel. This allows us to use two stakes when we track when we stake them down, these uh these all attach together. Just put those on there. These are sold separately. This is what the finished product's going to look like. Of course, this is a new trap, and then uh, they'll start out shiny. When you when we when we do our traps, we always try to get them to rust first. We'll put them in a put them in a toilet bowl cleaner or something like that to where it gets the oils off the trap. You'll hang them up. You'll let them rust, and then once they rust. Of course, they'll take dye. It makes it gives them this black look, and that's when that's when it gets the scent-free part. Um, other than the trap, we always use uh, shovels are handy. We use this to dig the holes and stuff with. We've got, of course, your hammer. We've got the red fox urine. This is something that we use as a cover scent. It's not necessarily trying to catch a red fox. Because I mean we're targeting coyotes, but this is a covers up our human scent and makes them feel at ease, I guess you could say, when they're approaching the trap. We use I've got various different kinds of lures. All these lures, they're gland lures mostly. They uh, they target all the all the predators, cow, fox, bobcat, raccoon. But these these are what gets the attention of the cow at a long distance, whichever way the the wind can carry them a long ways or as they're passing through, they smell that. That's what gets their attention. And then we've got baits. This is just a mixture of stuff. This you'll actually put in there, and this is what I guess you could say makes them more excited when they get there. This is the this is what they're after. They want they like the smell of this better than anything. It, it gives them interest and makes them hopefully get caught in your trap. All right, when I'm setting dirt hole sets. When I come up to a field, I like to find a corner of a field, a drain that comes out in the field, a long tree or whatever. But right here in this particular spot, it's like the corner of a field. We've got another, we've got a bean field back here. They come through here a lot, travel route, but uh, as far as coyotes and stuff. 
But when I get to that area, I like to find a piece of grass or something that kind of sticks out more than others. Like right here, you got a big wad of grass that sticks out. I use that for backing. That way when coyotes or whatever it might be that you're trying to catch, when they come around, they've got to approach it from the front side. That way they don't miss the trap. Um, catching coyotes and stuff, it's, like you said, this is a dirt hole set. This is probably the most popular one. It's nothing hard. It's just main main few steps to it. We start out by digging what I call it's like a presentation hole, a mouse hole or whatever. This is like where the coyote comes up and looks and sees. It's where you're gonna put your bait and stuff that, they, that they're thinking that something's in there that they're gonna catch. So Zach, how important is the scent control when you're setting a trap like this? Scent control is the main thing. Uh, if you're not scent free, you're not gonna catch much. We always wear rubber boots. We got our rubber gloves. All of our equipment, the shovels, the hammers, the traps, the stakes, everything is bold. We use trap dye and stuff and bowl everything before we start. After you dig the mouse hole or whatever the presentation, you're gonna dig the bedding area for the trap. You're just gonna dig a big round circle. So now this is where the trap is gonna set. Yeah, this is where your trap's gonna be bedded at. Clear out the spot a little bit around because you want to be able to you want to know what they're getting into. This way maybe if the lure doesn't draw them in when they're just walking around, this right here hopefully will just catch their eye. We've had some cold weather here. The ground is really hard, and, and this digging is not really easy. We found one of the easier spots to dig, and uh, uh, it's still uh, pretty hard. It's still kind of froze there on top anyway, and uh, a little time-consuming digging these these uh, traps out and getting them prepared. While you're digging these traps, you want to make sure you get all the... This is, luckily, this is not rocky ground, so... You don't ever want any rocks or anything like that in your bedding area because they might prevent your... Once you got your trap in there, it might prevent your jaws from closing all the way. Okay, we've got that spot ready. Everything's ready to go right there as far as for the trap to be bedded. Now we just got to get our traps and our stakes and we'll put one in the ground. Well, after you've got your trap bed prepared, uh, it's time to set your trap. We've got double stake swivels on all our traps. We put our stakes in here. We'll we'll cross them like an X, where they can't uh, animals can't pull them out as easy. Now you drive that down flush with the ground. Flush with the ground, yes. Okay, now we set our trap. You want to make sure when you're setting these traps, of course, don't catch your fingers. And you want to pan the pedal. You want it always to be level with the trap as you're putting it in the ground. Always make sure everything in here is loose. Because the main thing about this right here, it has to be good and sturdy. You don't want anything to be moving because for one thing, when a cow feels something move, you ain't gonna see him no more, he's gonna be gone. You want it to be like where they touch on one side or the other and nothing moves. Just make sure it's good and solid. And then now we're ready to cover it up with dirt. Alright, 
next, next we're gonna put the dirt over the trap. I always bring my dirt with me just for the simple fact, like right now the ground's froze, so what you're digging out's hard and it's wet, so I, I like to have dry stuff. Put it in a sifter, just over the top of it. Give it a more natural look. Okay. You don't want to get it too thick, but I mean, as long as it's, I mean, you're gonna have it three quarters of an inch to an inch thick over top of your trap. Get it good and level. The main thing is, is so it won't hinder the trap from shutting. Right. Yeah, you don't want anything on the trap bed that's gonna, when the jaws close, well, it won't allow them to close, and that way your animal will get free. Dead grass is wadded up. This kind of helps hold scent. And then I guess you could say, lets the, lets the predator know that there might be something living here. Put it down in your first original hole. And that'll hold scent. That's where it keeps them coming back through the weather and stuff. I'm gonna get our scents now. First, I wanna put some lure in there. This is long range stuff. Everybody's got their favorite lure. This is canine force. You put it on a little piece of stick, about a pinto bean size. Put it down in that hole. And the next, this is uh, red fox urine. This is what we always use for like a cover scent for ourselves. Of course, it's going to attract them too and make them feel comfortable, but it's going to it's going to cover up any human scent that I have here on the ground. It's where it keeps them, I guess, not so nervy. And then always, I just do a horseshoe around the trap. Now this right here, that's what I call a finished product. Hopefully in the morning, we we'll check these traps every morning. We've got some other ones set, but hopefully we'll have some fresh meat here in this trap in the morning. Right, folks <clears throat> this is the first catch of a trap line this morning yesterday we set all day and we got about 30 traps in the ground so hopefully we'll have some good luck this morning like I said this is our first catch we've checked probably eight or ten traps so far so we've got plenty more to go hopefully we'll have something else for you This is our first coyote catch on the trap line this morning. We've had a lot of success so far. We've got a red fox and a cow. Uh, we've got more to check. Well, folks, this is the uh, second red fox of the trap line. Every trapper's got their 
favorite spots and this is one of mine that's been very good to me over the years. I've caught bobcats and coyotes and foxes all here. This is our second coyote on the trap line. We've got two coyotes now and two foxes. It's been pretty successful. We still got a lot of morning left, so this frosty morning last night animals must have been up moving around pretty good. Hopefully we'll have more. Well here we are with our third coyote on the trap line. Uh, so far it's been a pretty productive day. Uh, like Zach said earlier, it's cold cold night last night got the animals up stern so we're gonna hopefully check some more traps and hopefully we'll have some more this makes coyote number four we're in a spot right here this is ahead of a drain out in the field you see we got a branch running through here it's kind of thick so this coyote I'm sure was traveling through looking for him a nice little snack but uh he found our trap here. This makes number four, and we're going to go get some more, hopefully. Well, we're with Coyote number five here this morning, and guys have done an excellent job for us. We've caught several coyotes this morning, and we're hopefully going to catch a few more. In fact, right now, if you can look down there, we have coyote number six. If the camera can get it, right down there in that bottom, and we got two more uh, traps to check on this farm, and then we still got a couple more farms to check. So, uh, awfully good morning for us so far, guys. We'll go check the rest up. We're down here in the bottom now. This is the sixth one we was talking about from up top. Jed's up there right now. He's resetting his trap. So I'm gonna get this one reset, and then we'll be on to the next ones. Well guys, we're back here and uh, we've got another coyote in the trap here and uh, this is number seven for the day. We're just a little over half done. makes cow number eight. This is uh, the second cow we've caught on this particular farm right here. Another nice cow. We've got uh, more traps to go, so we're gonna get this one took care of, reset, and then we'll, maybe we'll have some more. Well, folks, it's uh, a good morning and it keeps getting better. This is cow number nine, and we've still got several more traps to go we're just over halfway like we mentioned earlier still on the same farm this is number three on this farm we've got uh, a couple more spots to go after we leave here so we'll hurry up and get this one reset and move on
we moved on to our next farm. This is cow number 10. A little bit vocal this morning, but uh, last night was a pretty good night. The animals were stirring good. And today we've helped out the future deer populations and turkey populations pretty good, I think. Taking these predators out of the herd. Well, this is the uh, last farm we've got to check this morning. And it's way up in the morning. Keeps getting better though. This is the uh, first trap we've checked on this farm. We've still got uh, a few more to go. Hopefully we've got one, maybe two more. Who knows? This is cow number 12 on the trap line. This is the last trap of the day, so our days come to an end. Yesterday we had the, the one cow and a red fox. We set a few more traps, but this morning we've had, this makes 11 coyotes, a red fox, and a raccoon this morning. So today was a pretty successful morning, and uh, maybe we'll have more tomorrow. The weather's turning a little bit warmer now, so it might still be good, but warm, colder weather is always the best. But this morning's been one of the best mornings we've had in a while, so we'll see you, catch you again tomorrow. Well guys, we're uh, back here from trapping this morning. Uh, we uh, went along with Zach and Jed this morning. Uh, we'd had some interest in uh, people wanting to know about trapping. It's something that was done a long time ago a lot. Uh, it seems to be coming back. And as you can see, it's coming back along with the predators. Uh, this is one morning's catch here. And as you can see, we've got 11 coyotes here. And uh, that was the focus on what we were to take this morning. Uh, we, we were lucky enough to get a red fox as well. Uh, but taking some of these predators out of the picture helps our wildlife, we think. I think, there, as you can see, there's a lot here. So this is one morning's catch. There, there's a lot of predators out there. So uh, what do you think this morning of, about this morning's catch? I'm very pleased. Uh, 11 coyotes in one night, that's, that's something that's seems unheard of but uh scouts are out there they're, they're plentiful and uh by taking this many out of the herd like he said this is going to help the population of maybe the deer and the turkeys to come back and farmers farmers it, cows are a nuisance to them so this will help that situation also and hopefully tomorrow we'll have uh, more predators catch and continue to do all the good work here yeah it's uh it's been fun I've enjoyed it. I think Zach has too. And uh, I appreciate y'all coming to videos. Well, as you can see, we had a really good day. Uh, we're going to come back tomorrow and see what we can do. So stick with us and we'll see what we can get you tomorrow. The third morning of the trap line, we were able to connect with another coyote and a couple more foxes. We really had an enjoyable time out in the field with Zach and Jed. Well, we hope you learned something from this how-to episode on predator trapping, and we hope you utilize it uh, the next time you're out in the woods. Thanks for tuning in, and thanks to all of our sponsors who make this possible. Join us next time for Aaron Outdoors. Well, now it's time to... What's the word? Transition. Transition. Move. Transition. Transition. I don't know. Just call them I got the Zed and Jack. <laughs> 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 oh. Here we go. Four. <laughs> I was recording with this. I thought it was going to get me. Aaron Outdoors has been brought to you by Franklin Chevrolet Buick GMC. DonFranklinAuto.com, your dealer for life. Lake Cumberland Properties, over 25 years of experience sharing the beauty of Lake Cumberland. Day and Day Feed, more than just a feed store. Lake Country Outdoors, everything for the serious sportsman. McKinney and Blair Insurance, shop and save at the insurance store. Check with us, you'll be glad you did. Rex's Cycle Shop, located at 1349 Campbellsville Road in Columbia. 
Jones Exteriors, roofing, siding, windows, seamless gutters, quality pole barns, decks, and more. WK Deer Products, makers of Sweet Rack 18. Big Game Tree Stands, Icon Trail Cameras, Execute Scent Control. And by Muddy Outdoors, serious gear for serious hunters.